Christian Universalism series number 24, Thomas Kissinger, and we are going to be reading an excerpt here from the book of Dr. Stephen Jones, Creation's Jubilee. This will really be the three harvests continued, and from a section entitled Paul's Teachings on the Three Harvests. So the last time we touched on the barley harvest and the wheat harvest. The barley harvest represents the overcomers. The wheat harvest represents the church in general. And now we're going to touch on the grape harvest, which represents the unbelievers. To the surprise of many, God has made provision for all to be reconciled in the fullness of time through the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is the reconciliation of all things or the ultimate restoration of all things. And he has made provision through these three harvests, the barley harvest, the wheat harvest, and the grape harvest. Paul refers to all three in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 when he speaks of them as the anointed first fruits, those that are Christ's at his coming. And then when he speaks of all enemies shall be put under his feet until God shall be all in all. Hallelujah, man. I mean, it's all there for the taking for you to see it. Just ask God to give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him and take the time to study to show yourself approved unto God. The grape harvest. Paul does not stop with the second squadron of people raised to life. He goes on to the third squadron. And in fact, he spends more time on this squadron than the other two combined. It is the squadron signified by the grape harvest at the end of the growing season, which was the focal point of the Feast of Tabernacles. So note how Paul carries this theme into his dissertation on the third harvest in 1 Corinthians 15, 24 through 28. Then comes the end when he delivers up the kingdom to the God and Father, when he has abolished all rule and all authority and power, he must reign until he has put all enemies under his feet. The last enemy that will be abolished is death. For he has put all things in subjection under his feet. But when he says all things are put in subjection, it is evident that he, the Father, is accepted who put all things in subjection to him. And when all things are subjected to him, then the Son himself also will be subjected to the one who subjected all things to him, that God may be all in all. Note how often Paul says these people are to be put under his feet or subjected. There can be no doubt that Paul had the grape harvest in mind, for treading the grapes underfoot was universally known to indicate judgment. This is absolutely consistent with the rest of Paul's writings, where he reveals how all things, to panta, the all, will be reconciled to God. Since reconciliation is a term indicating peace between enemies, Paul is obviously referring to the rebellious nations of the earth who are enemies of God in this present age. Paul says that the purpose of creation is for all these nations to be subdued unto Christ. At the great white throne, death itself is said to be cast into the lake of fire. Revelation 20, 14. This indicates that all those who are judged according to the fiery law at that time will remain alive until the jubilee at the end of time. They will remain under the authority of those who receive immortality in either the first or second harvest. Those being judged, it seems, will have bodies that will still have the potential to die, but yet will not die. Our physical bodies were created to live indefinitely, 
with the proper nutrition and in the absence of genetic deterioration. The cells of our bodies could continue to replace themselves as fast as they died, if it were not for the detrimental effects of sin. It appears that in the final age of judgment, those ex-unbelievers will be healed of their genetic degradation, and the earth's environment will be restored to perfection, so as to eliminate death by old age. If by chance someone were killed by accident or by stepping off a cliff, he could easily be raised from the dead in order to continue to learn righteousness until the Jubilee. This, it appears to me, is how death can be cast into the lake of fire at the time of the great white throne judgment without actually bestowing immortality per se to those being judged. This interim condition is necessary not only as divine judgment for their sin and unbelief, but it also gives them the full length of time in which to learn righteousness. Then when he has eliminated all his enemies by turning them into friends, he will finally destroy the last enemy, death. One can only destroy death by giving immortal life. Only when death itself is banished from the created universe will God be all in all. Now notice that Dr. Stephen Jones gives us a hint into some specific details as far as what will be going on in the lake of fire as these unbelievers are having to go through a time of judgment. He mentions, they will remain under the authority of those who receive immortality in either the first or second harvest. So, very important to understand the overcomers who are raised in the first resurrection will be given the ability to live through all the ages and play a part in this ultimate restoration of all things. Well, we have the scriptures that mention to us that these overcomers will rule and reign with Jesus Christ on the earth. And that's the whole point of ruling and reigning. When you're ruling and reigning, you are having to rule and reign because there is still rebellion and there are still things that need to be dealt with and corrected and brought back to God the Father until all these enemies are put under the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ and God is all in all. Very important to understand that. That is the hope of our calling for those who have the ears to hear to be a part of these anointed first fruits the barley harvest, the overcomers, those who are going to play a part in all of this. The Apostle Paul said, don't you know that you will judge the earth, that you will judge angels? So, very important to understand that. And to backtrack here on some of this that Stephen Jones has mentioned in the beginning of this teaching... The three harvests, barley, wheat, and grapes. A particular harvest is associated with each of these three feast days. Passover is associated with the harvest of barley. Pentecost is associated with the harvest of wheat. And tabernacles is associated specifically with the grape harvest. Because this is so little known, most do not understand Paul's teachings on the three harvests. And as we have mentioned, barley, the barley harvest refers to the overcomers, the anointed first fruits. The wheat harvest refers to the church in general, those that are Christ's at his coming. And the grape harvest refers to the unbelievers. These enemies that are unbelievers, but shall be raised in the second resurrection and ultimately then go through the lake of fire. But this is exactly what Paul meant when he said, every knee would bow to Jesus Christ and every tongue would confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. 
This is exactly what Paul meant when he said that God would be all in all. This is exactly what Paul meant when he said, In Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive, every man in his own order, squadron, or rank. Paul knew exactly what he was talking about, and he was drawing from these three harvests that come from the three major feasts of Israel in the Old Testament, Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles. Paul had the revelation of the whole thing. God showed it to him from A to Z. And he spoke of it all through his teachings. Avail yourself to this and now have this in mind and let God show this to you. The barley harvest, the wheat harvest, and the grape harvest. The overcomers, the church in general, and the unbelievers, our God through Jesus Christ, all in all.